Hey Speedcubers, have you ever been watching the final round of a competition and wondered what each finalist's best possible average, worst possible average, best possible ranking, and worst possible ranking were? Well, you don't have to wonder any longer because I made this tool called the WCA Competition Head-to-Head -head Grapher. Check out all those cool bar graphs and funnel shapes. Hey guys, it's me, Carrie. So I made this tool that I'm calling the WCA Competition Head-to-Head -head Grapher and it's designed to be used during the final round of 3x3 at a competition to get a better sense of who's likely to win. So at the top here, you type the name of the competition. Let's say it's Euros 2028. And at the bottom, you type the name of two final competitors. Let's say we have Mats Valk on one side and Felix Zemdegs on the other. Now, as they finally do their solves, you type them in in these five spots here. So let's say Mats Valk's first time was a 7.24 or something, and then that creates a bar like that. And then for player two, you type it starting from the right side. And this is the design decision that I'm still not sure if I want to stick with because it's kind of counterintuitive, but you'll see why I chose to do this in the future. So let's say Felix got a 6.81 and you type that in and you kind of like work your way inwards. So let's say they get a 5.1, oh, that's, that's not right. For this one, they get a 5.19. And then on this side, they get like a 6.27 or something. And you can also activate the timer by pressing space which will kind of make it time it in real time. But I feel like this is less likely to be used because in a, in a real competition, you're using the speed stacks timers. So, you know, that's a way to kind of do this on the fly if you're not actually at an official competition. But normally you're just gonna be typing in the text boxes like this. Now here's what's, what I'm excited about about this tool is that when you type in a time like this for the fourth one, it triggers what's called the WPA and BPA calculator. So BPA stands for best possible average. So given these four times, what's the best possible average Matt's fall could get? Well, if you got a 0 0.01 or something ridiculous, then the three fastest times of the first four will count. But if he gets a really, really slow time, like a 20, then the slowest three times of the first four will count. So his possible options are bounded by the averages, the fastest three averages and the slowest three averages. So you can see in this little like shape here, that if Matt's Valk gets an 8.09 or worse, he'll get a worst possible average of 6.90. But if he gets a 5.19 single on the last one or better, he'll end up with a best possible average of 5.93. And that's pretty helpful because let's say Felix does his next solve and it's really, really good, like a 4.03 or something. Then you can see from these two things that Felix's possible outcomes after doing this are a 5.33 best possible average to 6.26 worst possible average. And you can see that because those ranges overlap here, there is still a chance for Matt's Valk to win. But let's say, you know, Felix's first time was even better, like a 5.99. Well, you can oh, actually, no, it has to be even faster than that, like 5.55, let's say. You can see that Felix's worst possible average is 5.81, and Matt's Valk's best possible average is 5.93. So there's actually no way for Matt's to beat Felix in this case. It just gives you a better sense of after just four out of five solves, what range of possibilities there are. So let me revert that to whatever it was before, like a high six. And then when you get the last solve in here, let's say it's a 7.5. What it draws is like the fifth bar, which is up to here. And then the black line goes into this sort of funnel shape and then it goes through the funnel. This funnel always squishes by a factor of three because we're taking an average of three, which means the influence of the last solve will be mitigated by a factor of one third. So it goes through this funnel and you can see that, you know, a 7.50 single will result in a 6.70 average. So Matt's Valk is shown with a 6.70 average. All averages are listed in the middle and that middle column kind of shows like the overall leaderboard of the final round. So let's say, so now, you can see Felix Zemdex, it says guaranteed first out of two because Felix's worst possible average is faster than Valk's average that he got. But let's say Felix's like second solve was really slow, like a 8.88. Then now Felix's worst possible average is actually slower than Valk's, so it could still go either way. And the threshold that determines which way it's gonna go is this time right here, 7.53. If it's 7.53 or better, that's what he needs to get first out of two. But it's 7.53. 5.4 or slower, he's going to get second place. So let's just do something better, like 7.04. You can see Zemdegs is faster. By the way, it truncates these to six letters just so that it fits better. So it says Zemdeg, but you know, it's really Zemdegs. But then if we do a slower time, like 9.09, .09, obviously Zemdegs gets second. Now, just to like test 
you know, for sanity check, 753, that time is the threshold time. So 753 gets you first place. They obviously tie in the average, but Volk has a faster single of 5.19, so he wins. But then if you slow this down just by a tiny bit to 7.54, Zemdex loses. So that just proves that the threshold does work. Um, so, I don't know, let's just have him do a really fast solve again, because why not? And now what we can do is see this arrow here is highlighted red. We can move on to seeds 3 to 4, and Volk and Zemdeg's times will be shown here. And as these guys compete, name C and name D, then like their entries will be compared against these two. So I will just put some other cubers like Max Park. Maybe we'll put in like uh, Yi Heng Wong. So there we go. So I'm just going to save in some random times. And what's cool is that uh, as they sort of straddle these times, like you can see what their worst possible rank to their best possible rank is. So let's say like, I don't know, Matt's, Matt's Park got us a 1.61 there, but we're not going to count up, care about that. Um, so okay, let's type in 5.98. Oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, I typed something wrong. Okay, well actually you can kind of see what's going on here. So let's say, well we can do DNF. So DNF get, makes this jagged line here, which I'm kind of proud of. It just means that DNF is infinitely bad. But given these times with Matt's Valk, he can place... Okay, DNF makes it look really bad because the, the formatting ends up all weird. So let's just do like an actual time, like a really bad time, like an 11. Or let's do like a 9.63. So that's a really bad time. Based on these four times, Matt's Park's... Max Park's results have a best possible average of 455, which is better than anything before, which would be first. But his worst possible average is 7.22, which is worse than both... Matt's Valk and Felix Zemdeg, so that would be third. So that's why it says can place first to third. Now let's say Yi Heng Wong comes in with a, uh, well, his best official right now in competition is 3.47. You get the same, well, you actually get something kind of interesting here. So Yi Heng Wong's dub worst possible average is still better than Valk, it's 6.62. So Yi Heng Wong can only get first to second. Now, one thing to note here is that these potential labels, the can place blank to blank, is only considering uh, competitors who already finished their averages. So Max Park says first to third, but this is kind of pretending like Yi Heng Wong doesn't exist yet because he's not in the database. Um, but yeah, I think that's like, you know, basic enough because I didn't want to get into complicated things about like, oh, Yi Heng Wong could be anywhere on the list yet. So let's just compare Max Park against the people who are already in the database. So he needs to get a 5.44 or better to get first out of third to beat Felix Zemdeg. So if he do, does a 544, he gets the same average 682 than Zemdegs, but he has this ridiculous single, so obviously he wins. But if he has a 545 single, well then he has a slower average and ends up with second. And you can see he placed second out of third. And you can see Felix, uh, Yi Heng Wong's can place label now changes to first to third. Because now, since Max Park is in the database with a good average, that's a one more person that could potentially, that Yi Heng Wong could fall behind if he gets a really slow time, like a 8.43 that would place him third but if he gets like a really good time like another 347 obviously he's gonna place first so you know you can actually kind of see how if you let the timer go up manually like I don't know if it's gonna actually show you it changing but it's like 746 is the threshold where he falls to third place right I think that just kind of makes sense and the other thing to point out I'm gonna click next is that these labels here are only gonna show up for the top three or the two seeds that are currently competing. And I did that because it gets quite cluttered if you show everyone, especially if the final round has 16 slots. So now that we're on seeds five to six, which let's name like Eric Ackersdyke, or uh, I don't know, Chris Yen. These are just some speed cubers that come to mind. Um, you'll notice that like, even if we put in really bad times here, like 10.5, you're not going to see Matt's Valk, who is now in fourth place because of, you know, he's just not on the podium anymore. And, you know, I thought about, like, well, maybe I should include an entire leaderboard of everything, but that would get cluttered, and also that's what the live WCA webpage is for. You know, I'm not here to create a, an exhaustive leaderboard. I'm here to give a good idea of who's in the running for the top spot and what they need to get that. So let's just enter in some random times just to demonstrate more. Um, yeah, DNFs, I think, look cool, but I, to be honest... I wrote this code in like a day, okay, I would say like two or three days, but on and off in those days. So it's like very unpolished. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I don't think I've fully tested like the formatting for DNFs. Like you can see right now, 
like DNFs are considered infinitely bad, so he, uh, Akersai could rank third to fourth. In this case, what you're seeing right now is that 3.54 is the fastest possible time to count, but the 3.61 is what Eric needs for a third place, right? Yeah, that that would play Akersdike third, but if it's three point, it, yeah, okay. I think I think you get the idea. You know, this is slower than that threshold, so it would place him fourth. Um, but okay, yeah, this is too slow. I think the reason this is helpful is because I think people very often in the middle of these competitions are calculating a best possible average in their own heads. But you don't have to do that with this, hopefully. And the other thing is, I did make that thing a couple... Oh yeah, like this is a more reasonable thing. Best possible average, 5.98. Worst possible average, 6.79. Um, I do want to point out that I made this other website called HCH Plotter from a couple years ago. This was for North American Championships 2022. So this is almost two years old now. And this tool was used on screen at the competition. But I felt like this one was very... Uh, unintuitive like I think most people don't understand kind of how to read this like they usually expect oh higher means slower lower means faster like I think this is more intuitive to look at because you know it's just up and down up and down and then like I still think it might be kind of hard to read these funnel shapes but it, it kind of it just feels a little more intuitive to me and then I did want to point out that the reason why I have the orange competitor starting from the left and moving right and the blue competitor move starting from the right and moving left is because they both need to have their final solves right in the middle, like basically touching that center column, because that's the only way that these these like funnels are going to work, I think. But the other thing is I'm going to make all the, the source code for this open source. So if you click view page source, uh, where is it? View page source. You can see that I wrote this in JavaScript and I'll put this, maybe I'll put this on GitHub, we'll, we'll see. So if you want to create a version of this that maybe has other settings you think would be better, feel free to do that. It is just a single HTML file, so there's no like extra files you need. And I, I like coding very simply like that. Um, because the way I see it is I'm probably not going to be doing much um, maintenance or like software development after this. Like if people report bugs, because it's very likely that there are bugs that I haven't discovered yet, or if they have all these other ideas for like new features to add, um, I'm, like, I don't think you can come to me and ask for me to fix it because I've already spent like enough time on this project. So that's why I'm going to put it like public so that other people can do that. If like other people can do the bug fixing and, and feature adding if they would like to. Um, but if there are like very, very simple bug fixes, I may look into it. So Chris Yen, if he gets 7.04, will probably be in fourth. Yeah, that makes sense. For, like place fourth out of six. And then if, if it's 7.03, then it's third out of six. And yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Um, Eric Akersdijk in this situation plays 6 out of 6, which makes sense because the 10.50 is counting. And yeah, that's... You could, and, and, and let's say um, someone mistyped an entry from like the first few seeds. You can always go back and change them. Like, like let's say Matt Volk's first solve ever was not a 7.24, but a 7.42. You can always type that in and it'll update everything because it's all just like live data in the thing. Yeah, so... Uh, that's all I have to say. This canvas is 1600 by 900 pixels. I know that's a very weird resolution, but you know, I, I, I don't want to deal with like dynamic aspect ratios. That's like too difficult. Um, let's just add like a few more. By the way, if you don't enter in the team's name or a competitor's name, it always just breaks apart the name string based on spaces. So it'll interpret name G and name H as like G being the last name and H being the last name. So. I think that's kind of funny because if you just type in like enough solves, oh, that's the same exact time. Let's change it. Uh, 6.39, 9.42, or whatever, 7. Point, like whatever. Like it'll, and then, oh, let's do the last one. Six, it, it'll just call them G colon 6.86, which I think is kind of funny looking. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is like, obviously if your last solve is in the middle of your range, like let's say, wait, hold on. Okay, oh, this is kind of cool how like 8.89 is what you need to get sixth place. If you get like a 8.00, you know, obviously it has the black arrow with the funneling motion. But if you go out of the range, like let's say you get like a three, like let's say your last solve is very clearly your best or your worst solve. It'll look like this, which is like not ideal, but like you can kind of, this kind of makes sense though, right? Like the black line will come here. 
but only the 6.39 is counting. So it's kind of like it gets clipped to the inside of the funnel and then moves in. I was thinking of making the black line visually like jump up and then go through the funnel, but that was actually like harder to kind of read visually what's going on. So you're just gonna have to understand that this means that like, basically this range here, 6.86 to 7.89, that's all you're capable of getting. Even if you get a 20.0 solve, you will be clipped down to 7.89. I feel like it makes pretty intuitive sense. And if we type in a cuber's name here, let's go with Patrick Ponce. Just, you know, we've got to fill in everyone's name with a real name. And then let's do like, like Dylan Miller or something. Yeah, so I guess I'll just type in some more times here. Okay, 20.0 is too slow for this. Let's just do 10.0. Uh, let's say Dylan Miller gets a 5. Point, I think Dylan Miller recently got like a 5.52 average or so, some mid 5. Or no, it's 5.46 or something. I don't know. Uh, and then, like, let's say, uh, finally a sub 4. That would be pretty cool, right? 8.59, you know? And then the, you get the funnel shape. So, so, like, going into the fifth solve, maybe Dylan's really nervous, doesn't know what he needs to get. This lets him know that he can place anywhere from... F oh, he can place first place here because... Wait, what did, what did Yihang Wong get? Oh, all right, I put it 10.93, so that's a 6.62 average. I mean, that's kind of unrealistic, but, you know, this is just for example. So... Dylan doesn't need to calculate in his head, what do I need to get first place? This will just tell him 5.54. But also he doesn't need to calculate in his head, what's the worst possible rank I could get if I absolutely mess up the last solve and get a DNF? Because he will get a sixth. He's basically guaranteed in the top six. Well, until you get like everyone later down the line to also enter in their like, times. Like if you only include the first eight seeds, you know, Dylan knows he cannot get worse than sixth, which is pretty good. So like DNF would get him exactly sixth out of eight. Yeah, like, <laughs> this line is overlapping the 8, but you get the idea. Um, so let's, let's just test. 5.54 gets him first place, exactly. And 5.55 gives him second, or third place, because Zemdegs, Park, and Miller are all within 0.01 seconds. So, you know, obviously it's going to like be a really close three-way tie in this situation. Um, but yeah, I think this is just good because, you know, I think people are always subconsciously calculating these things, but you don't have to anymore. Yeah. Anyway, um, I am currently in Houston, and, and I am I brought my Rubik's Cube, but I'm here for the BFDI and II Houston 2024 tour, where they're going to be screening the official release of Teapot Episode 12 and the return of II Season 2. For the first time in theaters, was the second time, because New York was last weekend. So I did want to get this project done before I had to go on stage in, in Houston because I didn't want this to be on my mind while I'm like talking to you guys in the audience. But I'm just really proud of myself to have finished this project. So yeah, the URL again is htwins.net slash hthgrapher. I'll put it in the description if you want to play around with it yourself. Thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you'd like any small tweaks to this code. Um, if you want to use it in your competition, go ahead. If you want to record it for your own videos, go ahead. I have like no possessiveness over this thing. I want to give it freely to the world. So if you want to, you know, tweak the code and put it in your own website, go ahead and do that as well. I'm cool with everything. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps your cubing journey. Bye!